All right. Not not too bad by Hayden and Tara. They only went over three minutes. We'll uh, we'll forgive them of that three minutes. It was pretty good stuff. Um, something you'll notice is you'll you'll see recurring subjects come up because every marriage kind of goes through the same kind of things in some degree. So just uh, take notes, April, and anybody else that needs to. No, she knows it all. Um, so the next couple up, I'm excited for them. Shannon and Trish Watterson. So uh, we're going to play their video, then they'll be up to talk. We're a little nervous, but we'll get through it. <laughs> um, my name is Trish Watterson, and this is my husband, Shannon, and we've been married be 26 years this June. Um, I was 19. I was 19 when we got married, and he was 29, and I have to say this funny story that just happened the other day. Our nine-year-old, <laughs> she, she kind of just dawned on her. She's like, you were 19 and dad was 29 when you got married and and I go yeah she go and she just said man I guess my, not many girls like dad did they and I said I said honey I just I he was just waiting for me to get out of grade school I mean it, it just you know so it, it was really cute but but um looking back now in our first year we are uh well, for one, he don't remember it. I mean, he has this amazing ability, and one of the things I love about him is he only looks at the positive. He only looks at the positive. When there's a problem, you fix it, you bulldoze through it, you don't go back and think about it no more. You go forward. To, you're, he's future-minded. I love that. Me, on the other hand, so I, I had to do all the notes and think about, you know, nearly 26 years is a long time. So I was like thinking about what our struggles were at the beginning, and and, uh, she, she's remembered them all the last two days, and we've nearly gotten a fight. <laughs> oh, was thinking it's of. driving him crazy. He goes, I'll be so glad when this thing's over so we can quit talking about this stuff. Um, but no, um, we, we weren't prepared for marriage. We just, we just were not. Um, we were, had only been Christians for three months. Okay, three months. So, you know, if you look at that wheel out there, which I love, that wheel, because it talks about, you know, you're, you're dead, you're spiritually dead. And then you get born again, and then you go into this infant stage, this baby stage, and that's where we both were. I mean, we were, you know, just dying out to flesh, you know, and, 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 and changing, and uh, the Lord was working in us, and, and it wasn't fun. You know, I heard a pastor talk years ago, and he said, getting married is like taking two potatoes, and you first you skin them alive, and then you put them in a pot of boiling water, and then you mash them until you can't tell them apart. And uh, I believe that's kind of what we experienced. The first part of marriage is that, um, that cutting away. Um, anyway, we did go to marriage counseling one time with our pastor, Pastor Moles. And, uh, but, you know, when you're in love, you're, when you're in love, I don't know what that pastor said to us because I just knew I was marrying the most perfect person and I was going to be a great wife. And we, I was excited to do laundry. I, I don't know why. My, my mom never allowed me and my sister to touch the washer or dryer. And I just had in my head that, oh, I can't wait to just, oh, just I decorate our house and, and do laundry and, and, and try to learn how to cook. And, and that was a big deal early on. I did not know how to cook. I married a dairy farmer, and I didn't even know what real butter was. I didn't marry her for cooking either. <laughs> so we... we uh, but I'm looking I back didn't care at, back then. Yeah, he didn't care. We'll get into that because the things we did at first, 
And that was one of our major problems that first year of marriage was now that we look back and I study what we did wrong, we, we, we quit putting each other first. We quit doing the work, doing the work. That's going to be a big, big word for us today is, is work. Um, just like Tara and Hayden said, you know, you, 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 you fall in love, and then once you get married, you just quit doing the things that you fell in love you know, the, the reasons why you fell in love with him. And I remember so often he would come to my house at night and he would stay there till the crack of dawn. And he'd tell me, Trish, I can't do this over and over again. Because he milked at 4, 4.30 in the morning. And I'd be like, okay, well, guess what? The next night he stayed. He didn't leave my house till 2 o'clock. And we just, you know, we were in love. It didn't matter if he was tired. He was living on love. Um, I fried him an egg eggs in my mom's leftover taco grease one day. He didn't care. It was wonderful. He did you know, he, he would take me to a football game, which I don't know anything about football. And he, it was the chief's playoffs. And he said, now dress warm. It's going to be cold. He said, wear coveralls. And I'm like, well, well, coveralls aren't cute. I'm not, I'm not wearing coveralls. So I wore, back then you wore pantyhose with little penny loafers. I had turtleneck. We had matching sweatshirts and I froze to death. I literally froze, but he didn't know it. I would just go in the bathroom and turn on the dryer vent and kind of warm up, and then I'd go back out there and smile. You know, he ne I never complained. I went fishing. I even cleaned fish. All right? I, I did these things because I wanted to be with him, and I, I, it didn't matter what we were doing as long as we were together. And we were impressing each other and doing the things just to, you know, just to make each other happy and smile. So... We get to talking about our used tos, and, and those were some of the things that we used we used to do, to, uh, to the reason why we fought, the reasons why we fell in love. And looking back when we started fighting in our first year of marriage, that's what it was basically was about. I mean, it was we we quit doing those things, but our lives changed. I had a nine to five job. He still milked double mornings, and he refed ball games at night, and we just didn't see each other. Um, and he big thing was he fished on the weekends, okay? Uh, all of a sudden, I was not priority, fishing was. And it, it, it let me think that, it, it sent a message to me as, I don't care about being with you anymore, I'm, I care more about going and doing this. It, but, what I failed to do was, used to, I would have went with him. Why wasn't I doing that anymore? I don't know, I was doing laundry, I guess. But, um, it, it, so those things, we quit doing those. We quit, we quit, um, doing the things that first showed each other that we cared and that we loved each other. Um, is there anything you want to add to that? You're doing good. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 2, verse 4, I think we have that there. Oh, that's not what I want. Sorry, that's okay. Can we do the one? But I have, but I have this complaint against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. So and that's what we had done. I, I, we had not put each other, we had not put our need, you know, we had not put each other first anymore. We were just going at it and frustrated beyond belief because, you know, he would get home and then, you know, I would be mad all day. I was mad all day because he went fishing. And I remember one day just screaming out the front door, I hate you. I hate you. I mean, I was mad. I was mad. I was throwing a fit. He didn't care. His mentality of it was, she's crazy, and she'll get over it. She'll get over I it. I hated that. I, oh, I hated that. Like, that just, that just went all over me. I mean, I, I, would, I would just stew on that all day because that just sent a message to me that I don't care. And what our spouses want us to know is that we care and that uh, you matter. What are you going to sacrifice for me? What are you going to give up for me? A lot like, you know, the Lord did for us, you know, our Jesus. So, um, and that is, it says, you see, our relationship is, to our spouse is a lot like our relationship with Christ. It's not a one and done deal, okay? We have to keep working. We have to keep pursuing each other. Um, we, we, and we just were not making marriage our priority. The Bible says in 531, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one. Uh, which basically means, it doesn't mean that you don't care about your parents no more. You don't talk to your parents anymore. You love them, but th they're not. They're, they were your 
first, you know, major human relationship that you care about, that you put forth effort into. But now that you've got married, you move away from that, and you're with your spouse now. You know, it's, it's you're one. God looks at you as one. When I, I believe that when God looks at me and him, he sees us as one. Um, anyway, we were showing both that the other one wasn't important. And for the marriage to work, it must be in first place. And just like Taryn Hayden said, other than God, God's up here. He's number, he's, he's right there. He's, he's next. And then it's the kids, you know. Um, and I, the, over the years just visiting with friends and stuff, it seems like once you have kids, you know, the women t- tend to gravitate towards the children. And then the men, you know, you got to pay for the kids. So the, the men gravitate more towards their jobs. Um, and it creates this division in, in the marriage. Um, it's not a bad, I mean, it's not a bad thing. You know, you've got to go out and work and make a living to take care of these kids. But I know at the end of the day, he's top priority, okay? And if it gets out of order, you become divided. And the best thing I believe that we can do for a marriage is by showing our kids what a healthy marriage is and that it can work, okay? How else are they going to know how to do it um, if, if we don't show them, you know? So, so you may think, well, I don't really want to put my spouse first. I, I, my kids, it's my kids. Look, you know, I've only got them for so many years and yada, yada, yada. But once they go, guess what? You've got that spouse there. And you're not even going to know them. You have to invest in them first. And I, coming from a divorced home, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, to, leave, to let your kids know that you're going to show them what a healthy marriage is so they can go and be successful at it themselves is, is huge. And uh, he had that. He had that growing up. Um, he was the leave it to beaver. I was not. I came from a broken home. So every time we got into a fight, I, I just thought, well, it's over. He's going to leave me. Um, and, I mean, it was just an insecurity issue for me because that's what I, what's what I knew. It's what I grew up. Um, it wasn't just, let me just add this. When my parents divorced at eight, um, it was a big deal. You know, of course, it affected my life. But some, some people think, well, I'll just wait till the kids get older, and then, you know, it won't be so bad. That won't affect them. Well, let me tell you. I was 21, I think, 20 or 21, when my mom and my stepdad divorced. And it, it rocked my world just as much as it did when my mom and my dad divorced at eight. Um, so, so don't let the devil get in your mind about that, thinking, oh, well, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll just, I'll, I'll just, and I'll just, I guess, just live it right now and endure it. And then maybe we'll leave afterwards after the, you know, separate afterwards when the kids are like, leave. Anything you guys say? No. Nope. <laughs> uh, so when we got into a fight, I thought he would leave me because that's what I knew. And, and it's, it's called a let's just call it quits attitude. I, I married the wrong person. He's just not my soulmate. Uh, don't listen to that kind of negativity. You, 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 there, you don't ha- there's not perfect people out there. You don't marry your soulmate. You, you become a soulmate, okay? And it takes work, okay? They're born. They're not born. They're made. You're made into the person that your spouse needs you to be, okay? And that's not a popular word these days. That is that, uh, that word work, okay? Um, I was just in Springfield the other day, and it, it amazed me. I'm walking through the parking lot with my bags, and there's these cars. And, I mean, they're in the pickup line. Oh, they ordered their, their you know, you order your groceries, you order your stuff, the, pe- the people come out, they even load it for you. We live in a society now where everything just screams now, convenient, easy. Uh, what are you going to do for me? Um, we, we stand in front of the microwave and say, hurry up, you know, like, we just live in this go, go, go society, and it's all about convenience and what's easy, and listen, the things that I believe that you feel most accomplished at attaining are the things that have demanded the most work, you know, and usually when someone sees you and they say, well, I I want what you have, but once you tell them how you got it, they don't really want it anymore because it took work, you know, and it's just like losing weight. That takes work, okay? It's just like um, a great marriage. It takes work. Getting out of debt takes work. 
I didn't know that until I married him. Didn't even know what debt was. I didn't know I had to take care of it. I didn't know anything about money. Um, so that was an issue for us too, but we're not going to get in a lot of it We're still today. working on that one. <laughs> we're still working on that one. Yeah, we're still working on everything. Guys, for us to stand up here today is not, we're not two perfect people that have it all together. We're just two people up here saying, hey, with God, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Um, I'm big into being... Well, he's positive too. He's positive, and I'm I'm a cheerleader. I, I'm all about victory. There's victory. I mean, if you've had some hard times and you're going through hard times right now, guess what? Don't give up. God doesn't create marriage to fail. He doesn't. You have you have a thousand chance of making this work because he created it, and he doesn't create things for it to just fail. Okay, but it only works if you do. Okay, we got to put in the work. And, you know, as I was reading over the last couple months after Pastor Dustin had asked us to do this, you know, I was like, man, there's nothing in this book that tells me life is going to be easy. I mean, nothing. And it says here in Timothy, Timothy 2, you know, he's talking about, you know, uh, being a farmer, being an athlete. Be, be, a, be a soldier. Um, the soldier, you sacrifice. You give up your life. You give up your rights. You know, um, an athlete, it takes being disciplined and committed. And a farmer, man, the farmer, he just works all the time, you know, to get his harvest. But the harvest is good. Once that last picture that is showed on our, our slideshow is of our grandbaby. And that's, that's my, I feel like that's my fruit. That's my harvest. You know, I'm the first one in my family that's not gotten a divorce. And I just think, my kids, we're all standing there in a picture together. And guess what? I didn't have to share my dance with my son with no other woman when he got married. I didn't realize that at the time what that meant. But I was like, until I went to another wedding and, and, uh, and the, the groom had, you know, a mom and step, stepmom and had to share. And I'm like, I didn't have to share. I didn't have to share, you know. I, I, you know, there's things worth working and fighting for. And uh, so anyway, it says there, I want to read that part to you guys. It says, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. So that is, that is so good. And it says, most, um, I already read that. When you meet each other's needs... And that's another thing we didn't know. We didn't know we had different needs, okay? We just didn't know. And when you first get married and you first fall in love, you, you, don't, you don't care what those needs are. You're just going to, you know, you don't really notice them. You just want to make them happy and you'll just do whatever. But when, um, when we're meeting each other's needs and you find out what they are, don't try to change them. They're going to be different. They're going to be different. His needs are not what my needs are. Way not. Way, way not. Um, um, but, and I'm going to let him tell you about that. Um, or first, do you want me to talk about your needs? All right, I'll talk about yours. <laughs> All right. All right. For most men, their number one need is respect. It's respect. Okay? Um, and why wouldn't it be? I mean, God said in, in the image of God, he created man. God demands our respect and our honor to him. So why wouldn't man have, have that kind of same tendency and that same longing to have? Um, it doesn't mean that I don't need respect from him. It just needs that that's one of his mega needs. That's what um, it's basically saying to him, I believe in you. I believe in you. There's nothing I don't think he can do for us. Uh, or for, for me, like I, I, or whatever he wants to do. I, I totally believe in his decisions, his opinions, his knowledge. I mean, I totally just really, I just respect him. I respect his judgment. I, I know he's leading our family um, in the best way he knows how and just by following the Lord. I know he's not going to lead us into a crisis. Um, um, but if he did, you know, I guess... I guess being a wife, sometimes you got to let him fail, too. You can't be trying to mother him, okay? He didn't marry you to be his mom. He already has one, okay? Um, all right, I, I feel like this second one, 
I'm not going to have any female friends in here anymore. But this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. It's it's sex. It's sex. It's his number. It's number two need. Um, maybe one. <laughs> maybe one. Maybe one. It's up there. It's a mega need. Okay. Um, men are very visual. Okay. Men are very visual. I mean, like if I run around the house and I'm naked or half naked, and and he sees me, it's like all of a sudden, boom, he's right there, and I'm like, he's he's to him, she must want sex. No, I just needed something out of the laundry room. But, but to him, he's very visual, okay? All right? Um, women, we don't, we're, we don't typically feel as sexual as men, okay? We just don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't. Um, it's not my major need, okay? But I know that he needs it, so I do it, okay? Um, now... Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. Um, God gave me the gift of sex to keep bringing him back to me, okay? All right? I, and I know if I um, withheld that from him and don't do that, it's going to cre- create frustration, and then he's going to feel like, oh, my need don't matter to you, you know? Um, so <sighs> when we're meeting each other's needs, it minimizes the risk and temptation, the outside risk and temptation. And here's the deal. I don't want to make life harder on him, okay? In today's society, I feel sorry for you men because you're visual. There's naked women everywhere. I mean, just everywhere. And and I I feel bad for that. And I see that that could be a a struggle for him. And I don't want him to have that struggle. So I'm going to do at what all costs that I have to do, even if I don't feel like it's comfortable. I'm still going to do it anyway, okay? Even though my flesh says, I want to go to bed in a f- big t-shirt and I just want to go to sleep. That's, that's, not what, that's not what his need is, okay? So I'm going to do my very best to meet that. Um, and all the men say, yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. It, it's just what, it's just, it's just what, it's who they are. And another thing is, here's my main thing is, I want my husband, here's the deal, if, he's, if he sees a boob crack the size of Texas, he's not going to look twice, okay, because he's completely fulfilled, all right? If he looks twice, the God will get him. God will take care of him, okay? That's on him. That's on him. But as far as this lady, I, I've done my, my duty, okay? I've done my duty, and you know... I don't want to make it sound like it's a duty, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, you're checking a box and you don't want it to be that way, but my goodness, how can a person need it that much? It's just, exactly, I, I'm like, there must be something wrong with you. And when we first got married, the only place you could go to was Cosmo. And even Cosmo said he was messed up, you know, he, yeah. It's like, you know, that's just not normal. But, but hey, that's, all right. <laughs> but anyway, I have noticed, ladies, when I set aside that priority for him, it means a lot to him. And it didn't, it wasn't easy at first. Because my tendency, my flesh, it's like something that, Nine o'clock at night, I just think, oh, let's rearrange the living room. Or let's go clean this. Or let's go organize this. And, oh, I think I'll clean the bathrooms now. And he's like, what are you, what are you doing? He's, you know, he, he doesn't want me to come to bed smelling like Clorox. And, and, and what Taryn Hayden said, going to bed together is, is great. I mean, that's, I, we, I, now I say, okay, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do what is necessary to make sure he feels like he's, his needs are being met and that he is a priority. And if that means locking our children out of our bedroom, and it was hard earlier on because they stick their little fat fingers underneath the door, and you just, you know, mama just wants to run to them, but you know what? I'm teaching them, hey, marriage is first, and me, this is me and your dad's time. We're going to watch our TV show, and we're going to laugh, we're going to connect, and guess what? I'm really doing you a benefit, children. And it, that's when I talk. And that's when he talks. 
That's when he talks. Um, so I, I need that. I need to hear his words. So I protect that. So that's it's our main. Another thing I protect, and he's going to get the, well, no, I'll let you talk about that. Um, so anyway, that was number two, is sex. All right, and that made me nervous, but it's over. So um, number three is friendship, okay? He... He, he wants you to come into his world. He wants to, you to be his buddy, okay? Um, that's, that's hard for me these days because we live in a, you know, we work together, we see each other, but sometimes I got to stop and I got to say, okay, well, what's he want to do? Well, what would, what would he want to do with me? You know, like uh, just something we could do together um, that is in his world for me to get out of my world and go into his. And not too long ago, I'm going to tell on you, he, he had... He's like, I'm gonna, let's go on a little trip. Let's go on a little trip. And I was like, a trip? You know, he goes, I'm not going to tell you where. It was before deer season because she was going to lose me for about a month. Yes, yes, yeah. So I was like, oh, we're going to go on a trip. And I was like, what do I need to pack? And he's like, he goes, just, just pack something folly. Folly. Okay. You know, so I was like, okay. Well, I'm all excited and stuff. And we got the kids all lined up and, and um, everything's ready to go. And, and we get into the truck and we're heading down 60. And he says, okay, you got two choices. And I'm like, really? Like, so excited. And he said, we can either go to Kansas or we can go to Chillicothe. And I'm like, Chillicothe? What's in Chillicothe? Well, there's a couple of farms I'd like to look at. And, uh, and, and I want to show you where we go deer hunting. And I'm like, okay. So I spent the next two days looking at cornfields and soybean fields. And it wasn't the trip I had in my head. Like Tara said, we get these visions, these, oh, these little fairy tales and, you know, these fantasies in our old head. Like, oh, it's going to be so fun. And, I mean, really, it really did not blow my mind. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, oh, wow, we're, this is what we're really going to do. But watching him just light up talking about the harvest time and, and where we do this there and who we see there at this place. And, and it was me getting into his world, and it meant a lot to him, I believe. Um, and then the Lord saved him whenever we left because we stopped by a, a state park, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was And we did go to an antique shop. Yes, so. we did go to an antique shop. Yeah, yeah. But um, other It wasn't than, all me. It wasn't all him, but you know what? Sometimes it needs to be. It, sometimes it needs to be. Number four is a supportive home. Ladies, we make a house a home. All right? We just, we just do. And he, he, he wants that. He desires that. Um, it doesn't, not saying that he doesn't responsible for cleaning and helping with the upkeep of the home or anything. But you know what I'm saying? Making the house the home. Putting your touch on it. Making it, you know, making it an environment where he wants to come home to it. It smells good. It's, you know, picked up or whatever. Um, hang your pictures. Um, you know, just make it you guys. You know, uh, put your stamp on it. All right. That's it. That's his four major needs. So now you're going to talk about mine. And I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> she wrote this down for me. Yeah, 1230 last <laughs> night. And he's like, do you have that ready for me, what I need to say? And I'm like, well, we had talked about it for a couple weeks, but... Um, <laughs> he slept last night real good. But I know a lot, lot of what her needs are. She didn't have to write them down. I knew it, so. Yeah, okay. Uh, All right, we'll just see. Okay, we got Ephesians 525. Is that on the board? No, d yeah. Okay, go ahead. Or do I get to read it? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So. Security. Security. Yeah. You missed that. It's number one. Security, oh, security. is number one. I better just stay back up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Here, uh, what I, I guess the most important thing I'd say is you got to put God first. It's just the way it is. God's got to be first. Then your wife second. Uh, and I've wrote down here, this is my own writing, not hers, but uh, marriage is a marathon, not a sprint. Anybody thinks that it's, you got to do it real, I mean, it's a slow process. It, it takes time. Time out. 20, I had that written down too. I just forgot to say it. Well, I. Yeah. But I wrote it down. All right, so. that's awesome. Okay, and it's a long, hard marathon. It's not easy. It doesn't yeah. mean it's always going to be easy, yeah. but it does get a lot easier. Yeah. The longer you go, it gets a lot easier. When you see the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> and and the closest, probably the closest thing we've had to a fight in the last six months, really, is when she was remembering the things I used to did 
over this. Really, she was bringing it up last night like, well, you used to do that. Well, I don't anymore. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I've changed. I'm a, lot, I'm a little better. We had to talk about it. I mean, what else, we were supposed to build a life together, and we're supposed to get up here and talk about our marriage. we got to reminisce a little bit. But she just li- I think she likes for me to touch her non-sexual. I know that. No, we're going to go back to security. Yeah. Oh, okay. we're not we're not we're not security, so. All right. <laughs> Men. Women want a selfless man. Okay? What are you going to give up for me? Okay? And for him it was getting rid of the fish and start putting me back in my place, you know, doing things that okay, if I didn't uh, if I need I know I can come to him now and say, hey, I need to talk. I I just need to be with you. He puts down everything, and I'm all his, you know, or he's all mine. Um, That 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 says a lot to me. Um, He's not detached. Okay. He he's. Did you didn't read that part? You you. I want to know he's on my heart, and he does an amazing job at that. I, I get texts all the time that says, I love you, I love you. Um, you know, it lets me know he's thinking about me. Um, I don't have a lot of words. He doesn't. I mean, I can, like, tell him all my feelings, and I get a K. 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 Okay, but that's all right. But when I just threw the day out of nowhere, and I get a text, my phone dings, and it says it's him, and he says he loves me, that it melts my heart and even after almost 26 years of marriage when your spouse still gives you butterflies and makes your heart you know beat up and down a little faster that's that's huge that's makes that makes marriage fun you know and exciting um you didn't read that either well you're you're doing it for me uh, uh, let me know i'm on your heart and then <laughs> well i scratched some other stuff on yes that. you did uh, be a sacrificial husband and not a self, selfish, detached man. I'm supposed to study her and let her know she's on my heart and be a faithful provider. Yes, be a faithful provider. All that's, right. That's in her words. I'm sp- speaking. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, now you need to go into this, the next one. Okay. The non-sexual touch. No. Oh. <laughs> not a convenient. What is it? You can't see it. We should have brought it. Oh, we're not doing a contingency contract. We're in real estate, so we, we, we write contracts on real property. And I love her, period. It's just the way it is. It's not, she don't have to do anything. I just love her. Oh, that's sweet. But that's not about the contract. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a contingency contract. You don't have to have supper done. I still love you. Yeah. Yes, a contingency contract is when someone comes in and they want to buy a house and they say, okay, Mr. Seller, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and I will give you this amount of money, and you're going to make sure it's, you know, there's no defects, it's, you know, you're doing this, and I'm, I'm agreeing to pay you this, and all the little details, okay? And if you don't do it, I'm out. I'm out. I'm moving on. Moving on to the next one. All right? Uh, marriage is not like that. When you, it's a commitment. Okay, it is not a contract. It means he's stuck with me and I'm stuck with him and we got to get through it. We got to figure it out. Okay, it doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean my works. If I, you know, if I don't do something that he likes, that he's going to, you know, bring up the D word, the divorce word. For a person coming from a divorced home, that would be devastating to me and it's a miracle that he he's never done that he's never done that he's never he's never said well we're done you know if you if you can't do this if you can't please me if you can't do this then we're just done you know it's it's never been that way and I'm so grateful because as coming from a like a, a broken home that that would have been that would have been very hard for me to get past that um anyway now you can go my turn again yep Where's- um, the non-sexual touch. Okay, I've already t- said that twice. Well, let's say it again. Let's say it again. We we don't want just a smack on the butt, okay, as you go through the kitchen or something. I want non-sexual touch. I, I want. I love it when we're just driving down the road and he grabs my hand for no reason. That that that's important to me. I I love that. Um, you love it too now, yeah. But used to it just meant, oh, if she touches me, she wants to have sex. No, it doesn't. I, I just want to touch you. And, and I'm probably better at that than I used to be. Yeah, way, yeah, better, better. way better. Way better. Way better. 
Yeah, you know, he's not a big hugger. And but I'm he does not hug a hugger. Me. He does hug me. <laughs> but I, but yep. I hug my wife and my kids, and they know it. So. Yeah, yes. <laughs> not Phil. <laughs> <laughs> you got pictures. Yes, you do. You got proof. Okay, can I but just... My, but my kids do know that I love my wife, always. They get on me for kissing her and hugging her they at the house. And it grosses them out. It grosses them out, but they're going to know that their husband or their dad loved their mother. We got to teach our kids that. Yeah. And... Some of the fruit I've got to see lately is watching our oldest son have a baby and the way he takes care of our Macy, his wife. And uh, it's precious. It's precious. And, and uh, I thought, man, he's watched his daddy. His daddy didn't beat him over the head with it. His daddy just showed it in action. Um, and I, I, I got to watch it and see it. We get to see our fruit. Guys, when we're going through it and we're working, we don't see the harvest yet. But trust me, as the years keep going by, you're going to start seeing, wow, I'm so glad we did that. Wow, I'm so glad we did that. One of the things, i got to go back to security just for a minute because this is really big for me. And... Him saying he puts God first in our marriage is, is crucial to me. That's, that's the number one. That's where I get my security. Of the mornings, I know that my husband's sitting at the kitchen table reading the Bible, and he's praying. And I've always trained our kids where, hey, if you get up when your dad's in the kitchen, you don't need to go in there and make a lot of noise and turn on the TV. I don't, I don't go in there and start my coffee. I know that's the, the, the most important business he's going to do all day. That's it. I know we can get through anything that the devil pulls, puts on us or life comes at us with if he is committed to doing that every day. It's all going to be okay. We can get through it because we got the source. Okay, that's my number one thing for security. It ain't what it's in our bank account, even though that's important. I mean, you're to be a pay- faithful provider. We're going to, you know, we, and he doesn't want me stressed out all the time and, and stuff. So all those things. But the main thing, the main thing is, is knowing that he's connected to the source. Okay, after non-sexual touch. Maybe we should touch on that one again. Just one more time. No, okay, number three. Number three. Number three. Open and honest communication. We're going to talk about she our feelings. Wants, yeah. She wants to know about my feelings, and a lot yeah. of times I don't know. He don't know. He don't I know. really don't, but... <laughs> it's hard on him. I do talk. The, the, the most words she gets out of me is like it. 9 o'clock at night. Till 10, when I'm 30, naked. 11. When I'm naked. That That's, helps. It helps when, I mean, it's just like the words start popping out, no. and, and it's amazing. No, it ain't always that no, far. I mean, we, no, we watch a little TV, and we talk, and we just unwind, and that's our time. The kids are out. I always get, I always put the, the kids to bed. He's always done that. I yep. give them a bath, uh, brush your teeth. I pray with them. them. He prays pray with, with them. Before they go to bed, yes. while she's doing Whatever she does, I don't know what it he is. He knows so. that, you know, i got to take off my makeup, which, by the way, that was one of the used tos that when we first got married, I never took off my makeup because I did not want him to see me without my makeup, okay? Yes, I know. And if I, I didn't want wrinkles either, so I just washed around my eyes so my eyes stayed blue all the time with my blue eyeliner. But anyway, it's just one of those used tos. And boy, after the first year of marriage, I didn't care. It was like, it's all coming off. Um, but anyway, he knows that I have a ritual of the mornings I got, or of the evenings. I got to get ready for bed. I, I, I want to, you know, pick up the house a little bit. I want to, um, you know, get, wash my face and, and get ready. So he, he's always been the initiator on getting the kids to bed. And taking care of them and putting them in the, you know, getting their baths taken and praying their prayers with them. And uh, which also shows them that he's the spiritual leader of the home. Um, back to feelings. You want to talk about those some more? No. No. But anyway, a, a woman wants headlines. Oh, Scott. She oh don't we don't want, want headlines. She, we want details. She don't want to talk about the weather either. No. So. Oh, I hate it. Like, I'll... Like when we're like have this moment alone. This and was years ago this when was I didn't have many words in either. He just wants to talk about the weather. <laughs> and I'm like, and, we're go, and the only place he wanted to eat was Golden Corral. And I'm like, are we 80? I mean, we're, we, we're not. We just want to talk about the weather and eat the buff, all you can eat buffet. Oppos- and, opposites attract. Yes, opposites attract. Yes, <laughs> yes. But my number four there, leadership in the home. That's what he does. Leadership student with children, like putting the kids to bed and all those things. Our finances, it's, it's on him. I mean, <laughs> it's not all on him, but the main priority. I mean, it, it's, it's the husband, the lead, the family. She and knows provide. I'm going to get up and go to work every day, yes, period. It's not, I'm not going to take the week off or, yes. you know, we're going to get it done. Because yes, we're a team. We're, we're a team. A team. Yeah. Um, another big thing, men, 
you know, when I talked about how women, you like to see your man or women naked, he wants to be naked. But All the time. You have to understand we're so opposite. I, I mean, yeah, I'm attracted to him and I love him, but I don't need to see him naked, okay? <laughs> I, I, it's just not one of my main needs, okay? But when that man is standing behind the kitchen sink doing dishes, man, you can't hold me back. I mean, that, it that, gets her naked. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> they said the number one thing that's attractive to a wife that her husband does is housework. Housework. And if you need to do it naked, that's fine, but it's not necessary. Okay? Just do it. Just do it. Okay? So, <laughs> that's bad. But let me, let me, I got to add this one story. We may, are we over? Okay. <laughs> We're done. I got to add this one story. And and it's not, it's because we, when we talk about our marriage and the ups and downs of it, you're going to go through rough times. And about 11 years ago, is, is, it was a, a rough time for, for, for me. Um, you know, when you're 19 and 20, you don't know what you want. But we'd always talk to, like, we just have two kids. And he goes, I just want, you know, let's have two kids, two boys. I'm like, okay, God gave us two boys. That's out of my mind. We're not having no more kids. And he comes to me one day and he says, I think I want to have another baby. And I don't know who, who all in here has met our middle child, but he's a lot. I was worn out. I did not want to have another baby. I, I was worn out. The kid rode on my hip until he was six. I mean, he just, well, I, love, I love my Judd. I love my Judd, okay? But I don't, I'm not a very good pregnant woman. Um, I get fall into deep depression because I get really sick. It's like like having stomach flu for five months. I, it's hard on me. I don't like being depressed and down. I'm a spunky, upbeat person, you know. So I, when you don't feel good, you you kind of get down and out. And that's that's where I, that's what I tend. You know, my pregnancies were both like that. Um, and I was just ready to take on the world. Our kids were older. I was ready to go jump back into work full time and, and uh, just, you know, take the world by the tail or hands, whatever they call it. And so anyway, I was like, listen, I don't know what you need to do, but you just go do it. Okay. If, if you need to go buy a motorcycle, go do it. Okay. Like I just thought he's going through this midlife crisis and he just thinks we need another child. And I don't think we need another child. Okay, but he kept pressing in and pressing in and pressing in on me till I gave in, and uh, we got pregnant. And um, 14 weeks later, oh, and I, I was very, very sick, probably the sickest I'd ever been. I got to go to the hospital, get hydrated. I mean, it was days. It, it was just miserable, okay? Um, but I miscarried at 14 weeks, and it was devastating. It was dev devastating to us both. I mean, um, it, it was awful. And, you know, usually when you want, don't want to do something for your spouse, their fear lies somewhere in there, okay? And I didn't want to have, I knew he was going to try it, want to try it again, and I was even more scared because I was like, we could go do this through this all again and, I, and lose it. You know, why are you doing this to me? Why, why can't you just be happy with what we have? You're, you're making me feel like I'm not enough. But... I was stuck because I'm like, if I don't do what he wants, and then I'm always going to live with that because I want to please him, okay? Just like how we want to please the Lord and do what the Lord wants of us. So I, we, we got pregnant again, and now we have Hallie. And it was it easy? No. It was hard, and it was sacrifice. But one thing he did and one thing he showed me was, I'm going to sacrifice with you. And this was big for me. He fasted. He fasted every Monday for until we got pregnant, until after we had her. And it didn't matter if Christmas landed on a Sunday or a Monday. It didn't matter. He didn't kick it down the road, you know, a different day of the week. Every Monday he was committed to fasting all day for me, for me. And that, that was big. That was big. And the baby. And the baby. And the baby. And that showed me he wasn't being selfish. He was sacrificing for me. And, and he's like, I'm sorry. And I remember him telling me, I'm sorry I want this. I don't know why I want this. But here's what I'm willing to do for you and, and to help us get through this. And now, you know, sometimes we don't understand at the time what we need. 
And you know what? The Lord knew I needed a little baby girl. He knew. I didn't know it. Me too. And him too. And him too. And uh, so marriage is about sacrifice and it's about work. And you know what else I know? Is if I don't meet his needs. I, I know God's got divine appointments every day for my husband to help build the kingdom of God and invite people to church. And I don't want to hinder that. I don't want him walking around like some frustrated man that's just, you know, lives at home, a home that's like a war zone. I want him to be free and ready to do those things that God lays on his heart so he can do it joyfully. And we, we've got work to do. We've got work to do kingdom-wise. We can't be stuck in our marriages on things that happened 10 or 15 years ago that we're not willing to forgive and give up, okay? We've got to pick it up. We've got to do the work. We've got to move on. So, so anyway, I just want to I didn't know, there was one more thing I want to, I want to end with, and that was, you don't know about this, sorry. Um, don't hide anything from your spouse. Don't hide them. Don't hide it. It's all got to be out there. And, you know, I look back now at our first year, and it wasn't that only that we were not putting each other as the priority and doing the things that we did when we, when we first fell in love. It was, I was hiding something from him. When we are hiding something from the Lord, there's not true intimacy, just like in our marriage. I, I was smoking, and he didn't know it, okay? Before we got married, we, we were little heathens. We were partying, and we were drinking, and we were all that stuff, and, and, and he just smoked when he drank. Well, I smoked all the time. I smoked with my parents. I smoked at work. I, I, it was a habit. It was a daily habit. And when I was young, when I started at 17, you know, I smoked those really cool marble reds, you know. But I got, I got tired of hacking up a lung every morning, and that wasn't attractive. So I, so I moved to these long, skinny capris. You know, they're just really cool. But I was hooked. I was addicted. Even on our honeymoon, he had no idea. We were in Cancun. I'd say, okay, i got to go to the bathroom. And I'd go down to the lobby in the bathroom of the hotel, and I'd smoke. I mean, I just, I kept it from him. The reason why I did was because it was so easy for him to quit those things. But I, it wasn't easy for me. And he had caught me one day at work. He just showed up to see me, and he saw me in the break room with my coworkers, and I could tell he was disappointed. And I didn't want to disappoint him. I just didn't want that. Um, and for him, everything's easy. You know, like, hey, that needs to quit. You just quit it. But this was a struggle for me. I, I was, I was, I was, I, I was addicted. And... So uh, that went on for a little while, and I remember, you know, when you first get saved, you want to, then you, this is how it should always be, but we want to save the world, and I wanted to see my family saved. I wanted to see my mom, my dad, my sister. I wanted, I wanted everyone to be saved, and at that time, I didn't have a real healthy relationship with my mother, and um, she had a, a friend, a real close friend that was a pastor's wife, and pretty popular pastor in our area, actually, was her husband. And this person had a secret life, a def another life. She did things without her husband knowing, and, and my mom just thought she, she worshipped her. She just thought she was awesome, you know, and they had a great friendship. But this, this lady was leading a separate life. And I remember, as I was trying to quit smoking, failing all the time, just failing. I couldn't give it up, and I would cry out to the Lord, and I just... I just couldn't shake it. Well, one night, me and my mom were driving home from Tennessee, and it was dark, and it was late, and I was driving, and we got to talking about the Lord. And, you know, I was, in her eyes, I was radical. Now, Trish, you're, you know, you're being too much. I was too much Jesus, okay? It was too much. And uh, anyway, she got to talking about this friend and, and how she admired her and all this stuff, and I thought to myself, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm smoking, and my husband don't even know it. It wasn't really that I was being convicted so much of a bad, nasty habit. Lord don't want us to do it. It's, you know, we're the temple of God. But it was more so that I was keeping it from him. And the Lord got a hold of my heart that night. I mean, tears. She didn't know I was crying. And I was like, I'm going to be different. And I flicked that cigarette out that window, and I never touched another one. And that's, years later, I start realizing it was coming between us. We couldn't have real intimacy if there's something that's hidden. You, you gotta, you gotta expose it. You gotta get forgiveness from it. You gotta, you gotta talk about it. You gotta, you gotta connect about it. You gotta just share it all. Be vulnerable. And you know what? Your spouse shouldn't put you down because of it. 
I really couldn't go to him at that time because he would just say, well, that's crazy. Get over it. Just quit it. But now I could go to him and say, hey, we're going to work this out. What do we got to do? You know, we've grown, and that's awesome. But I don't know how I'm supposed to end this, but... Um, it's my turn. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but maybe you just need to come down here tonight or today and just ask your spouse to forgive you. Maybe you're holding something back, and you need to, you need, it needs to be exposed. It needs to be talked about. And your spouse needs to know that you're a safe place that you're not going to hold that against them, that we're going to work through it, we're going to get through it. And it's just like the Lord does for us. He doesn't, we don't come down here with our problems that we have. We, we bear it all to him, and he still loves us. Okay, that's what our spouse needs to know. You get to bear it all, and he's still going to love me, and she's still going to love me. She's not going to quit. He's not going to quit. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm going to be different. Our marriages should not look like the world's. We should not. There should not. So, anyway, let's strengthen our church. Let's get our home life strengthened. And guess what? When our home lives are strengthened, then our churches are strengthened. And guess what? what? The whole community gets strengthened. And it's exciting. It's exciting. Let's keep doing the work. Okay? The work. Work. It takes work. I don't know. Let's pray.